the scope of the privilege is really determined by the kind of advice or the question that's being asked. So if the client is really asking you to give advice around an investigation, for example, you need to be able to document the fact that you're being asked to give advice on that investigation, what it is that you're trying to basically you know, answer, and then make sure that what you're, you're doing is being hired uh, to do just that and keep, keep that within the scope of what you're being hired to do. I, th I think a lot of times when people hire lawyers, they don't necessarily get precisely uh, into what it is that they're being asked to, you know, what the lawyer's being asked to do. And so what I'm, what I'm saying is to define a attorney-client privilege, you need to be able to say, this is the advice that you're being asked to give as a lawyer. You have to make sure that that's being you know, documented in a way that the client knows what they're getting. And if it's supposed to be confidential and privileged, then you need to identify it that way. Uh, under what circumstances might you want to get an attorney-client privilege? It would be those kinds of things that you want to keep confidential. Oftentimes, it's a, it's a combination of two things. It's a combination of needing the legal advice versus the consulting advice. And the second thing is, is you want it to be confidential. You want it to be something that is kept from the public.